I was gone from YouTube for three years, and here is why. Always force you to watch vlogging with Josephine. Annoying intro that nobody cares about. But yet here we are. We are. Hi guys, so this video is gonna be totally different from the ones I usually make. I know I say that a lot, but but it is. Um, see, I used to have a passion, writing songs and singing. I used to write a bunch of songs and then just put them online without even thinking about it. All I really wanted was for people to hear my songs and for me to become a singer. So what happened? Why did I leave? This is a story about pursuing your dreams, how much of a struggle it really is, but how you need to pull through. So if you feel unmotivated, I suggest you watch this video completely through until the end. But before you do that, let me know in the comment section down below, what is your dream? If you dig deep and get rid of all the limitations and reason why you can't achieve it, why it's not realistic, just dream with me for a little while. What is your dream? Did you achieve it? Do you still want to? So first of all, in order to make this video, I started typing out everything that went on in my head and it was meant to be just one simple video, but it turned out to be a whole series. So if you're new here, consider subscribing so you don't miss any of the following episodes. So first of all, the video I posted about the Ariana Grande concert in 2015 for me doesn't count as a real video. as I'll as a really YouTube related video. The last video I made was in 2014 and it was my vocal exam of In Case by Demi Lovato. I came back in May 2017. I recorded most of my videos during high school, mainly as an outlet. I was very proud of them even though maybe to you they might not be all that special. During that time I was taking on as many music classes as I possibly could. Choir, solfege, guitar, piano, pop vocals, classical vocals and drums. In 2013 I graduated high school and I wanted to pursue a career in singing. There was no plan B because that was all I ever knew and ever wanted. And I didn't care how but I was gonna be a singer. I wanted to study as a singer-songwriter at the pop and rock school in Hasselt in Belgium. As I applied, I learned that they only accepted five students for every class. So like vocals, five students, guitar, five students. I made my portfolio. I worked for a long time on that portfolio. I added some of my songs and I eventually got rejected. It was one of those general mails where they start really positive and you think like, yes, oh my God, I'm in. They start like, we, we love to thank you for your application. Congratulations, you were one of the many candidates trying out for this orientation. However, when I got rejected, I just remember I was reading the mail all alone and I was like, um, I'm just gonna take a shower, I said to my parents. And I went upstairs, I just started sobbing for the next like half hour to an hour until I had the courage to go back downstairs and tell my parents that I got rejected. When I calmed down, I realized that I had to find a plan B because I had to do something. I couldn't just be like, oh, I didn't get in, let's just get a job. It doesn't work like that. Like I said, I didn't have a plan B. Music was all that I cared about. Like, I was in school, I studied secretary languages, but it's not a passion. It was something that I did. I moved to a lower orientation to be able to still pursue my music. That was how much more I valued music above school. Eventually, since languages was a large part of the orientation, orientation I was currently in, I thought, well, maybe I can turn this into a passion because I do like languages, so maybe that will work out. So in Belgium, we have two different levels of higher education. You have the regular college and then you have university, which is 
really heavy. So here I am applying for applied linguistics in Dutch, German and English. They told me it was gonna be tough. They told me you need to be a fast learner. Well, I found out that year I wasn't. So I went to apply for the orientation applied linguistics, which was actually still at the college level. However, from that year, it will be at university level. So yeah. <laughs> to be honest, I loved the orientation. I loved studying languages. Although I feel like in college you're an actual person. In university, there are so many students studying in your university class and they're like, half of them will be gone by the start of next year, so why would we make that effort to get to know you? To be honest, looking back, I had a lot of friends. We had this large group of friends, but I was so miserable. Like, when I was with them, it was all laughs and stuff, but as soon as I was alone, my mask fell off. I don't want to say I was a fake friend, but there was just a lot of stuff that happened during high school and I guess I never really took the time to process that properly. So, at the end of the second semester, just like the first semester, I got my results and I failed everything. The orientation was too hard for me. I remember during exams that I just didn't leave my room at all and I would spend most of the time crying because I couldn't study fast enough. Like nothing is more frustrating than when you know in your heart that you're not gonna make it and that you're gonna disappoint everyone. Like it's not like that. People support you but at that very moment you feel like I need to pursue or I will disappoint everyone. I realized this wasn't for me. So one day my dad comes to me and says do you remember when your sister studied classical music at the Muda? I don't know really how to explain that. It's The abbreviation is music and dance. In Dutch we say Muda, but I will from now call it MD. So MD is like a high school, but for music. Like you have the normal courses, but there's a lot of focus on music as well. It's like a full-time music school. So he said, remember when your sister studied at MD? Well, they have a preparation year for the conservatory. And I was like, oh, maybe, maybe I still have a chance. At that time, I had both classical and pop vocal lessons. I knew one of the teachers of the classical department because he was the one who accompanied, who accompanied, accompanied, who played piano for my vocal exam of In Case de Milovado, the video I uploaded years ago. I didn't know him that well, but he taught my sister to sing, and he's actually a really good teacher. But I wanted to go for pop vocal lessons, so that's what I did. I prepared three songs In Case by Demi Lovato, Shine by me and another song that I forgot at this moment. But they told me my voice wasn't what they were looking for. I don't fully remember what they said because it's years ago obviously but but they basically meant I didn't have that unique raw raspy voice that they really wanted. That comment broke me because I knew that it was something that I couldn't change. Like if they say, yeah, you sing well, but you're a bit shy, we all have to work on that, that's fine, you can work on that, but if your voice is what they dislike, it's over. So I went back to my parents who were waiting for me in the hall, sobbing once again. <laughs> so the teacher from the classical singing department sees us and walks up to us and asks what's wrong. And it didn't necessarily mean what's wrong, you're crying, but he was like, I expected you to audition today for, for classical singing. He asked me what's wrong, also because I was crying, so I said, yeah, I auditioned for pop vocals, but they didn't like my voice. Um, and he's like, well, why don't you audition for us? By the way, he thought that my voice was more 
meant for classical singing, like arias and stuff like that. He thought it was weird that I auditioned for pop vocals. He was like, you don't really have a pop voice. He told me, you have 15 minutes to calm down. I'll get the other judge and you will audition for us, okay? And you should know that was such a nice thing of him to do because auditions were over. Like usually you would have to wait until the next year to audition again. So... The fact that he did that was so awesome. So I was still sobbing. I had nothing prepared for the classical entrance exam because I was only focused on pop. Like even my solfege was only focused on pop, jazz, chords. Like nothing about classical music. So, so that was part one. Sorry for that. I wanted to leave you a little cliffhanger. Ooh. Like I said, there's more to come. So if you like part one, make sure to subscribe. And thank you so, so much for being here. And I hope to see you next time. Bye, guys. I was gone for YouTube for three years. Why? I will have to close my window or it will pick up too much sound sound from outside okay <laughs> I was gone from YouTube for two years and here's why I was gone from YouTube for two years here's why I was gone from YouTube for two years here's why okay one of them needs to be good so I'm gonna leave it at that what is this and why is it making so much noise oh is it meant to oh that's handy it's very annoying this is a story about so if you are new make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the following up so you don't miss any of the following episodes it's my clam board in the yes it is hope you're ready for the next episode don't do drugs kids During that time, I was taking on as much as many. During that time, I was taking on as many music classes as I possibly will. As I applied, as I will. Eventually, since languages. So the teacher was like, You have 50 minutes to calm your. You have 50 minutes to calm. Minute. You have to go, cause you can still watch another, just go to my channel. Okay, this is getting really annoying. I couldn't be bothered to find music for the end slate. So, here is this wonderful tune I just made, especially for you. Bye. Very awkward saying goodbyes. I'm very bad at it. Thank you for watching. Love you.